Introduction to Neural Networks with Java, Class 5, Part 3. Welcome to Part 3. In Part 3, we are going to learn how to apply the genetic algorithm that we just developed to the traveling salesman problem. First, let's look at what exactly the traveling salesman problem is. The traveling salesman problem specifies that a traveling salesman needs to travel between a number of cities and he wants the optimal route. The traveling salesman problem has long been a mainstay of artificial intelligence problems to apply various algorithms to. Because the traveling salesman problem cannot be solved by typical traditional brute force type programming. You can't just simply loop through all of the cities in every single combination and hope to find the shortest path. This is because there would just be too many combinations on anything, any larger set of cities. Let's take a look at this now and see why traditional programming cannot solve the pr traveling salesman. Here we see the itinerary for our traveling salesman. But what order should he visit the cities in? The order makes a considerable difference in the amount of miles that the traveling salesman will travel. Look what happens if we just travel to these cities in alphabetical order. Here we start in Chicago. We fly to New York City. From New York City, we're heading across the country to San Francisco. Now we're crossing the entire country again to Washington, D.C. That was not the optimal route. Let's look at what the optimal route is. Here we start in San Francisco. We fly to Chicago. From Chicago, we fly to New York City. From New York City, we now fly to Washington, D.C. That was the more optimal route. But how did we know that was the optimal route? For a small number of cities, a human being can simply eyeball it. But a computer needs to try all possible solutions, at least according to traditional programming. Is it really that bad to try all potential solutions? For just a handful of cities, it's not, and traditional programming could easily figure out the most optimal route. However, to figure out for a larger number of cities, traditional programming will not work very well. Let's look at the number of combinations that there are for a select number of cities. Here you see the number of steps that the program would have to go through to calculate the optimal path between various numbers of cities. For three cities like we had here, it's only six steps. That's not terribly difficult. The program could do that very quickly. But notice how quickly it goes up. Four steps is 24, five is 120, six is 720 steps. By the time we get to 50, the number is 3 times 10 to the 64th. This is a very large number, and the program could never complete such an operation, even with a very fast computer. However, using a genetic algorithm, we can find a potential optimal route. We can do it even with 50 cities. 50 cities is not terribly difficult using a genetic algorithm. We will now take a look at how you would use a genetic algorithm and apply it to the traveling salesman problem. Recall from previous class parts that the way to use a genetic algorithm is you must map parts of the solution to the individual genes of the chromosome. The chromosome will be one complete path through the cities. The individual genes will be the individual cities visited. We always have a constant number of genes in the chromosome because no matter which path through the cities the traveling salesman takes, he's always visiting the same number of cities. So we will create a population of potential solutions. These potential solutions will be itineraries that take the traveling salesman in various ways through the cities. So the chromosome is a path through the cities. The genes are the individual cities. We will then splice these to take traits from good paths to hopefully create offspring that are better paths. This is how we implement the genetic algorithm. Here you see the sample program from this chapter solving the traveling salesman problem using a genetic algorithm. Notice it has found a optimal path through the cities. It looks optimal. There may be a better solution, but this is a pretty good one. And this is how a genetic algorithm actually solves the traveling salesman problem. 
you can see that it found it after 202 generations. It didn't take it very long to find it, and this was a fairly large number of cities. We will now look at the source code necessary to implement this. Here you see the calculate cost method. This is necessary for any implementation of the genetic algorithm. This calculates the cost of a chromosome. Remember, for the cities, the chromosome is the list of the cities in order that the traveling salesman will visit them. Here we simply move through the cities and we calculate the proximity between the first city and the next. We keep adding up the distances from each of the cities using a simple XY distance formula and we calculate the total cost of the chromosome. The total cost of the chromosome is the total distance. This will be used to sort the chromosomes to pick those that will be allowed to mate and produce the next generation. Mutation is another important function that must be implemented to achieve a genetic algorithm. Here we see how mutation is done for the traveling salesman problem. First we get the length. This is the total number of genes or the number of cities that we're going to visit. Then we create two swap points, swap one and swap two. These can be anywhere in the length of cities. Then we create a temporary city which is going to be used to swap the cities. We move one of the cities into the temp, then we copy the other city over the other one and restore the temp to the other city. This effectively swaps the two cities. This is how we do a mutation. We just randomly swap two cities at points inside of the list. This concludes part two. In the next part, you will learn how to apply the classes that we just developed to solving the traveling salesman problem. We hope you will continue with part three. Thank you. This course is based on our Introduction to Neural Network Programming books for Java and also Introduction to Neural Networks for C Sharp. Available in both paperback and ebook format.